message. This is the Will Clayton Church of Christ in Alma, Texas, and this is December 18th, 2022. A Sunday morning message is the defiant attitude of the saints is shocking. The defiant attitude of the saints is shocking. As we go to Jeremiah 42, we'll have some other parts to this lesson. We want to explain to you the scriptures Though they're written in Old English, it's still English. You can read it. That's just a few words in Old English we don't use regularly, like thou and thee. Uh, that's a few words. The, the rest of the words we use every day, the way they're phrased, because of they spoke a little different. They may have some words at the end that we would normally at the beginning. That's fine. You look at it. You see. You comprehend it. There's nothing wrong with the Bible. The problem is the instructions are clearly understood. They're just not desired. There's nothing wrong with the text. You can, they've got modern translation, and they don't say anything different than the other. It's the same way. The, and no one's, a, no one's running to modern translation and coming in droves to get baptized. I don't see that. Uh, and I deal with this. This is my life. I don't hear anybody beating down church doors. Hey, I, got a, I got the real translation in English, and I understand. Now, I haven't seen that yet. And I went, when you find it, please call me. Please, I beg you, and let me know, 713-894-2510. It doesn't exist. It's an excuse to not obey the word of God. That's what it is. The word of God is to benefit you. It, it doesn't help the church that you're here. It helps you. It helps you because we're going to be here. It doesn't help God. It's for you because he loves you. He's trying to tell you and I how to secure yourselves, prepare yourselves for death. Because if you're going to die, He's going to return and he's going to change you. He's going to change you for a worse place or a better place. You want the better place. As Christians, it's very simple. Paul said, don't try to tamper with the simplicity in Christ. It's very simple, but it's very challenging because we have a mind that wants to do what he wants. So let's look at Jeremiah 42. Begin at verse 1. I want to draw a little information here to let you know what's happening. You can read this in previous chapters and other prophets. Israel has been gutted. There are false people who are not Jews, not believers, that have been transplanted to the northern tribes. You have Judah still hanging in there. And the Lord is trying to work with Judah. It is his favorite because they are obedient. That's why. And now they've become disobedient. They've gone in the way of the older sister, the ten tribes, which he describes it. And the other two tribes, Judah and Benjamin, uh, are beginning now to deteriorate. So now we have a case where they are coming to Jeremiah for him to go to God, to talk to God, to see what they need to do. Now that's out the mouth. And saints are good at that. We'll say something out the mouth, but the heart is not near that. Matthew 15 describes that. It is the system of saints that are ungodly. And that's not the normal saint. So their desire is to hear the word of God, they say. However, they're assuming God's going to say what they want. This is how we often ask a question. Well, what does God want us to do? And then we assume we got several different options we think he's going to pick. And when he comes at us with something we didn't believe or we had no desire to do, then we get upset. And this is how, it is. This is how, this is how every human is made. He's given that ability. And so when he gives them this answer, the saint's heart is far from the law, but their mouth is very near. They say, I want only the word of God. Now, watch what happens when he gives it. And see, now, I want you to understand something. These are real saints. These are not transplanted like the northern tribes. And some of the northern tribes, they, they are doing okay. Some of the few, there's a few stragglers of blood and not of blood. But this is supposed to be the cream of the crop. These are bona fide saints. You don't get any better than Judah. It doesn't get any better than Judah. And it doesn't. The Lord said that. Now, watch what's going to happen to them. So don't try to pick and say, okay, he's a bad saint. No, no, no. These are saints gone bad. This is the faithful. Finally giving in to the devil's plea. Jeremiah 42, 1. Then all the captains of the force. Remember, they have an army. See, because their plan is we're going to fight. We're not going to let Nebuchadnezzar come in and take over. They don't realize God's going to say some very powerful things about Nebuchadnezzar. He's going to call him my servant, my minister, because he selected this crook to whoop Israel. And others, and especially those who Israel runs to. Not that Israel's causing them trouble. It's just Nebuchadnezzar has been given an option. Wherever you want to go step your foot and take over, do it. So God is working in his heart 
as far as what he know he wants to do, plus gauging it to where if you run over here, I'm telling you, he's coming there too. And this is showing you the sovereignty of God. He's not forcing Nebuchadnezzar. He's not forcing Israel. He just say, I know what you guys are going to do. So he says, and Johanan, the son of Korea, and Jezaniah, the son of Hoshia, and all the people from the least, even to the greatest, came near. Now here we go. And said unto Jeremiah the prophet, Let we beseech thee, a supplication be accepted before thee, and pray for us the Lord thy God, even for all this remnant. For we are left but a few of many, as thine eyes do behold us. That the Lord thy God may show us the way wherein we may walk. And the thing that we may do, but it sounds so noble. And I don't doubt that in the hearts of some, it may be noble. But the problem is, when you hear the answer, the nobility goes away. And your own sovereignty takes over. And you say, I refuse to do that. That's not the answer I wanted. And I want to forewarn you, if you live your life like this, your end will be ruined. It will. Because you were placed here. You didn't place yourself here. You don't sustain yourself. It's a blessing to be alive. People that take their life, you know what their problem is? I want relief from what I see. <laughs> I don't want more bad. I just can't handle what I see. I don't want out. But they don't realize it leads to a greater Amen. degradation of life. And that's the problem with suicide. They're not leaving because they want to hurt themselves. I want out. I want out. Who told us that? God. The man wants relief from his troubles and sorrow. So he exits. And that's why the punishment is unforgivable because he says, no, you don't get to leave when, until I tell you to leave. And we've got to understand that. Then Jeremiah the prophet said unto them, I have heard you. Behold, I pray unto the Lord your God according to your words, and it shall come to pass. That whatsoever thing the Lord shall answer you, I will declare it unto you. I will keep nothing back from you. Now when he says this, he has a history now of not lying. Now later they're going to accuse him of lying. But he has a history. Jeremiah is like a Bible. That has yet been written. This portion. And as he speaks. He still sins. He does things wrong. He makes mistakes. But when he's speaking in the physical past of the law. They know okay. That's from the law. That's why they go to him. They don't go to, they go to him to pray. He's been in battle with the false prophets. They've been saying things. He's been saying, man, that's not what the Lord said. And so they know now in their heart, they go, okay, okay, so far what he says has been happening. Okay, now let's go ask him to pray. But I'm still not getting the answer I want. Verse 5. Then they said to Jeremiah, the Lord be a true and faithful witness between us. Now you hear that? See, when you make statements like that, now you know the Lord is listening. He says, okay. If we do not even acquire to all the things for the which the Lord thy God shall send the two of now you see that? See, this is what's wrong with calling on the Lord to be a witness. He is. And he's going to remind you, know, you asked me to witness. Although I was going to hear it anyway. I'm witnessing you. I see what you're saying. I see what you're about. And our punishment comes. Our blessings, whatever you choose. Whether it be good, this is what they're saying, or whether it be evil. We will obey the voice of the Lord our God. I'm going to read this one, one more time. Whether it be good, meaning if it'll be something pleasant that we like. Or whether it be evil, something that we don't like, an instruction that's going to bother us. We will obey the voice of the Lord our God. Remember, God is listening to this. To whom we send thee, that it may be well with us. So look what they're saying. It's going to be well with us, even if the thing he says is bad. It's going to be well. This is good, clear comprehension. But the heart has to line up with the mouth. When we obey the voice of the Lord our God. They have good understanding. And it came to pass that after ten days. That the word of the Lord came unto Jeremiah. Then called he. Hohanan the son of Korea. And all the captains of the forces. Which were with him. And all the people from the least even to the greatest. And he said to them. Thus saith the Lord the God of Israel. Unto whom you sent me to present your supplication before him. If you will still abide in this land. Now, man, now look. Now, remember, we're trying to get out of here. Is this the advice? Stay here. You know, a lot of people do not know before he uprooted them, he told them, stay. We've talked this before here. He told them, stay. He had a purpose. This is the original plan. 
stay. Now he's going to tell you what he's going to do. Then I will build you and not pull you down. I will plant you and not pluck you up. For I repent me of the evil that I've done unto you. So all the bad that's happened, he says, okay, my heart's changed. You guys want to hear what I want? Okay, well, stay here. Be not afraid of the king of Babylon, of whom you are afraid. Be not afraid of him, saith the Lord, while I am with your Savior and deliver you from his hand. So, so they feel, okay, he's coming to the land. He hasn't gone to Egypt yet. See, Egypt, Egypt now has still a strength. It looks good. They look good. No war, no problems. But remember, Nebuchadnezzar is the beginning of world domination kingdoms. The beginning. There's only been four, and you'll never see another one like it. He's the greatest. He's the golden. Right? Metal? And Daniel said, you are a king of king and lord of law. No earthly king has ever been said this about ruling this earth that is outside of the kingdom of God. This is the greatest king ever on the earth. Wherever he went to rule, he was there. And all the other kings, including Rome, are less than he. Now, God knows, okay, now, as bad as he is, I can protect you from him. Why? Because he's my servant. Not that I like him, I'm using him. So he's letting him know, it's going to be okay, just stay here. And I will show you mercies unto you, that you may have mercy upon you and cause you return to your own land. Now look at his plan. He's telling me, it's okay, I got a system here set up for you. Okay, just, just stay here. It's going to be okay. I'm going to cause y'all to be brought back. Just relax. But if you say we will not dwell in this land, neither obey the voice of the Lord, your God. We got two areas. We're not going to stay. And in addition to that, we're not going to obey you. It's two areas. You can't stay in the church of Christ and not obey the Lord. I'll make a point out. Make sure you understand. Don't leave the church of Christ and run to the denominational world. But if you stay, you still got to do his will. You can't stay and do what you want. And you can't leave and do what you want. You have to stay and do what he says. It's for your benefit. He says, saying no, but we will go into the land of Egypt. Where we shall see no war. See, this is in their mind. Nor hear the sound of the trumpet. There's no going to be caught in the war. No fleeing. Nor have hunger of bread. Egypt is stacked. And there we will dwell. And now therefore, hear the word of the Lord. You remnant of Judah. Thus saith the Lord of hosts, the God of Israel. If you wholly set your faces to enter into Egypt and go to soldier. And that's a, here's option two. Option two will be explained. And all of this is prophecy. But remember, this is the guy who doesn't lie. He sins like we do, but he doesn't lie when he's speaking from the word of God. See, this is the representation in Matthew 23 when Jesus said, when they speak from Moses' seat. And when the Pharisees, Sadducees, and Rhodes, all are speaking from the official voice of the word of God. Okay, he said, you can take it. Yeah, but don't do what they do. And so they know, man, you know, Jeremiah's a guy. He says it and he does it. Verse 16, then it shall come to pass that the sword which you feared Shall overtake you down the land of Egypt. Now that's telling them what? Yeah, because there's going to come now. See, now the Lord already knows, you know, I'm controlling futures. I'm controlling how things go. See, the Lord doesn't just let like some denominations teach things just roll in motion. No, he interferes when he wants, whether it's with weather. He interferes with health issues. He can bring a famine. He can bring a famine in one section. Everybody else has food but you. And no one wants to bring you food. If you keep challenging the Lord on those things, you'll see even the precious America can fall. As we see, this, that disease ravaged this country. And everybody was afraid. You cannot tell God his power. If God wants to challenge you, he will. And we need to understand that. He never has left the throne, nor has he ever said, I let things happen, all of it. It just happens. See, you can't find that. So he says here, Well, for you are afraid, shall follow coast after you there in Egypt, and there you shall die. So he said, okay, the sword, famine, it's, it's going to come now. Verse 17, So shall it be with all. All the men that set their face to go into Egypt the soldier in there. They will die by the sword, by the famine, and by the pestilence. Oh, look, there's a third thing he mentioned. Now he says, if I don't get you with the first two, I'm going to disease come there. Isn't that something? 
Wow, he can really do that? Yes, it isn't there. No, Egypt isn't dealing with any of these issues. There's no sword, there's no famine, there's no disease. Now when they go there, here it comes. So he says, And none of them shall remain or escape from the evil that I will bring upon them. For thus saith the Lord of hosts, the God of Israel, as mine anger and my fury have been poured forth upon the inhabitants of Jerusalem, so shall my fury be poured, uh, excuse me, poured forth upon you when you shall enter into Egypt. So they're not there yet. And ye shall be an execration. Now you know, you know, you know, I'm an individual that I'm always trying to uh, point out some things to help us understand how angry uh, the Lord is at what you and I do in this world. And I want to emphasize certain things because it allows us to draw near to the Lord in faith and to have a heart that will say, man, God, is he really that angry? See, when you watch these TV preachers, I'm not talking about people teaching truth. Just because you're on the TV doesn't mean you're not teaching truth. These false TV teachers. You have to understand something. They're creating a God that doesn't exist. A God that only wants you to be successful. Overcome your diseases. Be successful financially. Rise up. Empowerment. You don't have any power. Brother Keith taught a wonderful lesson last week. To even understand the word of God without the Holy Ghost. That's, don't you understand why they can't get it? Have you ever asked yourself, how can an intelligent individual with degrees of learning from grade school to multiple doctoral handouts, how can you not read English and get the point? Because the Holy Ghost isn't helping you. That's why. Because he says you're cursed. This, this word we're dealing with here, execration, uh, the joy of it is to explain to you and I how how terrible it is. It's a cursing. You want to validate? You know Strong's number system? H423, H423 for Hebrew, because it's in the Old Testament. It's a Hebrew word. A cursing, an oath, a swearing. See, God has taken an oath. I'm going to curse you when you go to Egypt. That's what he said. I'm going to curse you. He says, that's what you're going to be. You're going to be an excrete. You're an excrete. That's what you are. You're cursed. When you go there, you're cursed. And you think you're going to dodge God's curse? And do you really think that? And you really think God made all this stuff for you to come in and destroy and ruin his good name, as he kept saying? You're going to ruin my good name, my image. Talk about my image, how I am. He said, don't you know in the Old Testament that I am a dreadful God and the Gentiles fear me? He said, so you're going to stand here as my people and disrespect me? I'm not letting that happen because they're afraid of me. He says, and I can't let them see. You're not afraid of me. This is a theme throughout the Old Testament. Even Moses had to learn. No, you can't, you can't deny what I told you to do. No, no matter how much I love you, you got to do what I told you. So he says, in an astonishment, that's how the people began to view the Jews. See, the Jews began to be viewed. Now, they remember they're coming back to Egypt, who used to own them. And now they're coming back. And they're going to look at <laughs> why you guys are in bad shape. And then Nebuchadnezzar's going to come and everybody's going to be in bad shape. And the curse. See, now you're an actual curse. You, you are as a people are a curse. And a reproach. So I'm taking an oath and then you are going to be a curse. You're ashamed. And you shall see this place. He said, you'll never come back. They're not going to bring your body. One, at one point, he's going to say in some angers, he says, I don't even want some of you buried here. But he says, you as your eyes see will never see my face. Praise God. Sister Betty, wonderful. Praise the Lord. My God is good, isn't he? Just got through talking about the rescue of our sister. And here she walks in. Praise God. The Lord had said concerning you, O your realm of Judah, go you not to Egypt. No, certainly that I have admonished you this day. So Jeremiah said, okay, now look, I don't want, I don't want this on me. No, for sure. I've admonished you. I'm giving you a rebuke. No, it's an official rebuke. And they know you got a history of telling the truth. For you dissembled in your hearts. 
when you sent me unto the Lord your God, saying, Pray for us unto the Lord our God, and according unto all that the Lord our God shall say. So declare unto us, and we will do it. And now I have this day declared it unto you, or it to you, but you have not obeyed the voice. <gasps> Lord, look, look what he said. You have not obeyed the voice of all your God. Nor anything for the which he has sent me unto you. Now therefore know certainly that you shall die by the sword, by the famine, and by the pestilence in the place whither you desire to go in a sojourn. What is the big deal here? That's a huge deal here. This is the number one people on the earth. The number one people on the earth. They are number one as a unit. There's none greater. The Lord said you were the fewest, and I made you mine. I have no other nation. And this is the cream of the crop. And they have been sinning against the Lord. And now they appear to have an humble heart. They've been forewarned. And watch the defiant heart of a once righteous saint in live and living color. It's like a movie. Chapter 43, verse 1. And it came to pass that when Jeremiah had made an end of speaking unto all the people, all the words of the Lord their God, for which the Lord their God had sent him to them, even all these words. Then spake Azariah, the son of Hoshiah, and Johanna, the son of Korea. And all the proud men. Watch this. Now. See, now watch the group that rises up. All the proud men. See, this is always issues in the church of Christ. We know the denominational world has thrown in the towel. They've given up. We know the idolatrous world, the Vishnus, the Hindus, those idolaters, those who worship in the Muslim who have created a false god, Allah, who doesn't have a son named Jesus Christ. Those idolatrous groups, we understand, okay, those, those groups are out there. And you have the Jews who've cast the Lord aside. They're out there. But the saints of God have a group within the church that will rise up. They'll be leaders with pride, men of renown, men well known. And what they say will override the word of God. They just need to say it. Some of the most faithful saints you know on the earth that have done so much for you, you can't even count it. They will listen to them. Peter forewarned us. He said, many will follow their pernicious ways. I mean, we shouldn't look at things. It's shocking. That's why I put the word shocking in the title of exaltation. It's shocking. But you got to get yourself together and go, this, this is it. This is my people. This is how they do. Don't be like them. It's such a powerful reply that God has to tell the prophets. Here and now, he will slide in a statement. Son of man, don't be like them. Don't be rebel. Because he knows, I know I'm sending them to you, and you're hearing them, and you start seeing they got more than you, and look like they're doing better than you. You might start doing a little thing that you like or two. He says, don't do it. Because we found out as good a guy as Jehu was, he handled Jehu. He used him to do his work, and then he dismantled him. Because you have to let him know, I picked you as a king. You don't ever tell me what you're going to do. I tell you what you're going to do. And after they had done the work the Lord needed, opportunities to worship properly, after destroying Ahab and all those things, he wouldn't, and so he was destroyed. That's for you, and that's for me. You will never supersede the Father. I don't care how strong you are, young you are, or rich you are, smart you are, how well you look, or how well you're known, you will always be a child before God, and you either be his child and be punished, or you'll be the devil's child and be punished. Or you can be blessed as being God's child. You make the call, I'm going to make the call for me. So he says here, he mentions these proud men, they rise up. Thou speakest false. The first thing out their mouth, thou speakest false. Okay, now, now he has a history of always speaking the truth. <laughs> you went to him, you led the people, and you said we're going to do whatever you say. And he just says, thou speakest false. Now let's see if he has reason to prove. Let's see if he has reason. Now see, he should have a word from God. This is what you need to tell each other. And I'm going to tell you. Once you say I'm speaking false, you better read your answer. Amen. I don't need you to explain. I just need you to read it. And make sure you're reading it. And it's not a metaphor. Make sure you got the right section. Because if you don't, it's going to be exposed. 
That's all we need to do. If you're going to walk around on the earth and think that you can't find the answer of truth, how will you make it to heaven? I'd like you to break down that to me. If you think that there's not an answer within these pages of the Bible for every cause that you bring before the Lord, I don't know how you think you're going to be saved. And why are you wasting time today? Let's go eat breakfast and listen to some jazz music. Morning jazz club. What are we here for? If you don't think you can find the answer and it's readable, what are you fooling around with the Lord for anyway? Does he even exist? See, this is the kind of nonsense that goes on in this world. This is what you have to deal with every day of your life. Well, let's just love each other. That's what God really wants. See, that's what it always boils down. After you boil a pot of lies down, but let's just love each other. All of us have different thoughts. But when you die and you get stiff like that carpet, you left that body a long time ago. They can hold your hand and kiss you all day with that formaldehyde on your body, and you have left before they even put you to the undertaker's hands. And you're going to be placed Somewhere that same day, according to Jesus Christ, praise God, Sister Rose, by what the Lord has answered our prayer. He is showing his power today. Thank God. God bless you, sister. Good to see you and Sister Betty. Pam, God bless you. And so we have to understand the power of God. We see for our eyes how people are allowed to exist in our number with devastating troubles that the Lord seemingly just peeled away and said, No, not today. Because I've seen people get devastated. I've been on earth long enough. I've seen people get devastated. With strokes. Heart attacks. And I go to their funeral. One day it may be me. It won't be that. I'll be from something. But I'm guaranteed I'm not going to be standing here forever. But neither will you. So let's look at Isaiah 40. I mean Jeremiah 43. First thing out the mouth in verse 2. Clear. You speak falsely. Now let's see if he's got text to prove it or a word from the Lord. The Lord our God had not sent thee to say, go not to Egypt, so during there. But Barak, the son of Neriah, said it thee again, uh, said thee on against us. For to deliver us in the hand of the Chaldeans, that they might put us to death and carry us away captives into Babylon. Okay, now at this point, he's supposed to say, the Lord God had told me this. Now, remember what the law said about a false prophet or the truth prophet. If the thing comes to pass, then that prophet is right. So they should be able to go to Egypt and everything should be okay. You know how we know he lied? Because they went to Egypt and they were slaughtered. But he says now, now, see, you have two choices. This is always before you. Friends, it's always before you. You will know consistently the word of God has spoken truth. Someone rise up and lie and say something different. And they may use a few scripts and twist it. So you're looking, okay, now I'm reading the answer right here. But why is it really that simple? Because she said or he said. But Jeremiah has up to this point never lied as he spoke from God. Now let me explain something to you. I didn't say he didn't tell a lie as he spoke from God. He has a history of when he spoke. It always happened, and God always supported him. Always. When he says the prophet's going to die that year, for at the end of that year he's going to die, that said Jeremiah's wrong, guess who died? That prophet. Every time he spoke. So he is well represented as the authority that speaks for God. Even during the days of David, there was a counselor. And the Bible says this counselor, I believe the name is Ahithophel, this counselor, when he spoke, it was like you had talked to God because God was with him until he sided with Absalom and it was over for him. As long as he stuck with David, whether you had to rebuke David or not, it was good. See, you stay in the law of church, the church of Christ, as long as you stay and rebuke the saints out of Rome, that's okay. Commend the saints out of right, that's beautiful. But if you leave and go to denomination or idolatry, now your words that you used to say 
that people said, man, it was just like you heard what God said, because he would always repeat what the Bible said. You're not going to do that no more. You think you're going to be able to do it? You're not going to do it. You know why? Because it leaves the heart. The Holy Ghost says, you're an empty vessel. I'm getting out of you. I'm done with you. And now your words to the saints will be gargle food. And only we will be able to tell. We're like, oh, man, that's not even in the Bible. He twisted that. Only the saints can do that. You thought that was given to the world? It's never been in possession of the world. It's always been to the right. From Adam to today, only the righteous have the Lord stood with. On it. So, now he says, just, just bold faced lie. Verse 4 So, Johanan, the son of Korea, and all the captains of the forces, and all the people obeyed not the voice of the Lord. Did you see that? To dwell in the land of Judah. Shocking. What? Remember, Jeremiah is speaking his book. That's why it's accurate. This is, the, this is the book of Jeremiah. What he told them, you and I are reading. And it had the same impact like when you read this Bible. And they are disobeying God like you and I used to do when we read the Bible. And like some of your brethren do today when they read the Bible. You must understand the impact of a prophet. When he spoke, it impressed the people. And they knew he's speaking truth. He's speaking truth. But it doesn't mean I'm going to obey it. It doesn't mean anything. It just means I know he spoke truth. But I'm going to say, oh, that's not right. Verse 5. But Johanna, the son of Korea, and all the captains of the forces took all the remnant of Judah that were returned from all nations, whether they had been driven to dwell in the land of Judah. Now watch this. Remember, we're told there have been problems, ravagings. Nebuchadnezzar's coming. So you've got a group that has come from other nations. Remember, Israel's been plummeted and rebuked and punished. Captives taken away for years. And so now you've got people trickling back. Now, these, you know, this is, this is extremely important to get. Here are some saints coming back. That's like you coming back to the church of Christ. Have you gone to denominationalism, nonsense, idolatry? And you finally come back to the church of Christ. And then you let a brother rise up some proud men in the church and mess you up again after you've been in captivity. Let's read this one again. I want to make sure you get this one. I got, I got to make sure you and I get this one. He said, but Johanan, verse 5, the son of Korea, and all the captain of the forces took all the remnant of Judah that were returned from all nations, whether they had been driven to dwell in the land of Judah, even men and women and children, the king's daughter. Look at the king's daughter. My goodness. The royal family. And every person that never the captain of the guard, had left with Gedaliah, the son of Ahikam, the son of Shaphan, and Jeremiah, the prophet, and Barak, the son of Neriah. Now, now watch this. Now watch this. <laughs> Man, this is an awesome story God has kept. They're going to take Jeremiah too. Now remember Barak? Remember they said, you're just saying what he said. Now remember, Barak is right there. Do y'all see he's there? Barak's right there. They're going to take him too. Remember, this is an army. This is an army. See, they think they can fight. They think we're going to go to Egypt. It's going to be peace. You know, we're, going to, we, 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 we're not going to battle them, man. We're going to get out of here. It says they retreat. But the Lord is saying, don't retreat. I want you to stay. Barak is right there. So they said, he, he told you to stay there. Did you get it? He told you to stay there. <laughs> he didn't speak for the Lord. Jeremiah did. Now, Barak, some kind of a way, obviously, he has accepted this story. Are y'all with me? Look at what they're doing. They're saying... <laughs> This guy's the one told you say that. It's just because he believes doesn't mean he told you say it. It's just a shift. It's just a shift of direction of hatred. That's big. This guy, he must be telling Jeremiah to say. What? Why would you pick this guy to say that he's telling Jeremiah what to say? I mean, you, you see it in verse 3? It's the same Barak. It's just pick him. He's the one. 
But Jeremiah is the speaker for the Lord. Barak may be in agreement, but you didn't go to Barak and say, go to us. Go to the law for us. Do you know this happens in the Lord's church? Someone will take a leader and say, you don't understand that because so so and so telling you. They'll do that. Your wife told you that. They'll do that. Oh, yes, they will. Yeah. You're doing that because brother so and so said it. They'll do that. Your profession of the word of God is not true to brother so and so. Although you read from the text. Brethren, do not let people do you like that. Please. It is foolishness. So, verse 7. So they came into the land of Egypt. Now look what happened. Now remember, they took them. Why? Because we're a force. Now if God didn't want Jeremiah to go, he could have stopped. He could have shut it down easily. But he didn't. He let him go. Why? Because I need my voice there with y'all. I'm going to tell y'all what's going to happen when y'all get over there. Jeremiah's not going because he believed Egypt's a place. They take him. They take him just like a prisoner. I know you're going with us. This is what saints will do. They will take righteous people with them knowing, you know, he may say something. Let's bring him to. <laughs> We're going to show him it's going to be okay. Whatever their motive, they do know one thing, you know, it's still kind of, well, that is Jeremiah. I don't know, man. That is Jeremiah. It's okay. Saints will take the Bible with them too. They'll take the Bible with them when they go into sin. They'll take the Bible. To the denomination world. You got the Bible with you. To the denomination world. The Bible says don't go to the denomination world. The Bible says don't go to Egypt. I'm taking the Bible with me to Egypt. That's what they do. I got to have my word of God with me. It's telling you don't do that. People will go to church after they divorce their spouse for the wrong reason with another woman, another man. God is good all the time, and all the time God is good, you know. But the Bible tells you don't do that. What's the matter with you? Because I do what I want to do. So he says here, verse 7, so they came into the land of Egypt, for they obeyed not the voice of the Lord. Thus came they to Tophanes. That is, wow, they are back. What is the statement of the Lord when he brings them out of Egypt? I don't even want you going back there to buy horses. Wait a it's not about you going back there. I don't want you even to go buy. It's like somebody tell you, I don't want you to go to Houston, not even to buy a car. Don't you ever go back to Houston, buy no car, buy any nice cars, don't go. And you go there to live, not to buy or to live. Because you say, God, my God can't protect me in his land where his name is, but I'm going to go to Egypt because my God can't protect me. Now, you know, you understand that God's taking this personal, right? So he's saying, I can't protect you. What did he do to them when he brought them out of the land of Egypt? When they said, you're going to let our children and us die. He said, okay, since you said that, I'm going to let you die in the wilderness. I'm going to take your children without you to the new land. And that's exactly what he did. And he told them before he did. He said, you're going to all die. But your children are going to outlive you. And they're going to the new land because you're not worthy. You got to watch what you say out your mouth about the Lord and his people. Be careful. Because he will come back for you. He will. This, this, this is his system. And this is what he does. As we get ready to wrap this up. He says that they made it back. So they are stuck back in Egypt again. Exactly what the Lord told them not to do. Isn't that amazing? Here's what. The understanding of the topic. Title. For us to be exhorted by. The defined attitude of the saints is shocking. This is so shocking that they would do this. The system of disrespect and the action and strength to go here. Now the rest we're going to read is going to blow your mind. The what, what he's going to do to them now is going to blow your mind. But we'll talk about that another time. The gospel of Jesus Christ. Do not let it fall on deaf ears. 1 Corinthians chapter Number 15 and verse number 3. The Bible says, For the living unto you, first of all, that which I also receive. Is Paul lying? He said, receive it. You didn't see him receive it. So you have to have faith in his word. How that Christ died for our sins 
according to the scripture. Why would I have faith in God's word? Because the Holy Ghost says I inspired in the right. So my faith is not in Paul the dead man. It's in the living spirit, the Holy Spirit, who inspires all the scriptures to be written. And that he was buried. And that he rose again the third day according to the scriptures. Now this is the prophecy. But Paul is saying, I saw it. I saw it happen. He was seen as he was in a 12. Let me show you something about the defiant attitude of the unbeliever that can see the word of God with a Bible in his hand. Look at verse 8. And last of all, he was seen in me also as one born of due time. Now, you know what that means? That means this is a in your face disrespect and dismantling of the entire system of the Mormons because they say that there are apostles still alive today. I've talked to some of the people that are coming to your door, and they said, oh, that's still alive. One guy told me I met one. I said, that's amazing. You could have met somebody that's been dead over 2,000, almost 2,000 years. How did you, you know, well, he, didn't met. he gave me that name. I said, no, nah, this is the last guy I saw. So did you see Paul and one of the other 12? I know you didn't see Judas. He was already dead. So well, who would you see? And so he couldn't answer. He shook my hand and walked off. So that's all that's left to do, peace. I don't want to seek peace. I don't want no more war. But this verse wipes out the whole system because the whole system is built on a lie told that there are modern day apostles. If a man says, I am the last to see, that means while he's speaking, you know, the people are growing in age and develop, and there are other people that the Lord may pick. He's picked out of due season, separate from the other. How does he know nobody else is being picked? Because the Holy Ghost told him, you're right, you're the last one. You're right, you're the last one. But I'll look at that verse and say, that's not what it means. Just like the proud man said, you lie, I speak falsely. Nevertheless, Mark 16, Jesus seems to believe in it. And verse 15, he said, go into the world and preach the gospel to every creature. He that believes in baptized shall be saved. But he that believes not shall be damned. Acts chapter 2. Let's see if they did it. Verse number 36. Therefore, let all the house of Israel know surely that God had made that same Jesus whom you crucified. Now, see, he's talking about because Peter and them didn't crucify him. He knows that. But all of our sins is the reason he died for our sins. But Peter knows, okay, you guys literally took his life. I just lied and said I didn't know him. I ran, but I didn't take his life. See, it says, you crucified. He's made him two things, Lord and Christ. If there is not someone else other than Jesus Christ, then who is this God that made who is that God? Now who is that God that made Jesus Lord and Christ? Uh, so there's another God in it. Isn't that amazing? Because Thomas calls him Lord and God. Nobody corrects him. So there's another God that's over Jesus that said, I made you Lord and Christ. Or either Peter lie, everybody lie. Like I say, let's go to the jazz club and eat some breakfast. It's time to lead this whole system. See, you've got, see, the Bible is like an in-your-face statement. It, it comes to you and says, you know what Jesus told that man? Do you believe in the Son of God? He says, sure, no, I may worship. He says, it's me. Drops down right there. Pharisees looking. People all around. He drops down on his face and he worth approaching. I'm worshiping you as the deity who you say you are, Son of God. And Jesus said, hey, get up. Don't do that here. People are looking. You know, yeah, that's what you're supposed to do. They threw you out the temple, but I'm going to tell you, I'm he. He doesn't tell him, worship me. He says, if you tell me who it is, I'll worship him. And he says, I am he. Drops down and worship. See, that's, I'm keeping my word. I told him. Now, he could have said, he could be like, wait a minute, hold on. This guy healed me, but he's crazy. Now, he thinks he's son of God. He knows, okay, yeah, 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 yeah. That makes sense. That's why you did something no one has ever done. Give sight to a person born blind. That was a special miracle that the Lord kept until his son would come and everybody on the earth knew. Oh, if you were born blind, nobody. No prophet could do it. No, no prayer could be uplifted. Mm -mm. If you were born blind, you died blind. But Jesus, special blessing for him to show, I'm going to show you, I can even open the sight of a saint Watch this, who's born blind. You came out the water blind. After baptism, you still blind. And the word of God can open up your eyes if you just believe it. So we can understand that. So he says, now when they heard this, they're pricking their heart, said to Peter, to the rest of the apostles, me and the brethren, what shall we do? 
Then Peter said unto them, verse 38, change or repent and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ. Why? For the remission of sins, and you shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. There's the promise. For the promise is unto you and to your children, and to all that are far, even as men of the Lord our God shall call. And in many other words that he testified in his heart, saying, Save yourselves from this untoward, that means a perverted generation. Then they that glad to receive his word were baptized, and saying that they were added to him about 3,000 souls. So we got 3,120 people, and that's the church at this point. There's nobody else. And they continue steadfastly in the apostles' doctrine, the fellowship. What is that? To walk in the light as Christ is in the light. 1 John chapter 1. Breaking of bread and in prayers. Acts 2, 47, praising God, having favor with all people, and the Lord added to the church daily, such as should be saved. Is there a special formula for high-level people like Mr. Biden, Mr. Trump, Mr. Obama, Ms. Pelosi? No, it's the same doctrine. Same doctrine. Uh, Acts chapter 8, verse 35, you tell them the same thing. Then Philip opened his mouth, began the same scripture, and preached unto him Jesus. So you would preach to the Ayatollah, Jesus. That's what you tell him. So now, man, Muhammad... He deceived y'all. You preach to him, Jesus. Amen. That's what you would do. That's nothing else you can preach. We, we don't believe he's the son of God. He's great. No, 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 no. I told him he's the son of God. See, because the Lord knows that's a separator. And then if he says he's the son of God, then he will do what he says. See, that's to identify those that say the son of God, but you don't do what he said. Nah. He says, why call you me Lord, Lord, and do not what I say. Luke chapter 6. He says it's not benefiting you. I know I'm the Lord. You're not making me law by calling me law. So you've got to do what I say for it to benefit you. He says here clearly, as it went on away, they came to certain water. Eunice says, see his water. What the hell me to be baptized? Why well, is he talking about baptism from Isaiah 53? Because he has a new testament in. Verse 37, Philip said, I believe it all that heart. Now, man, and he answered, said, I believe that Jesus Christ is the son of God. This would wipe out the whole Muslim community. None of them are going to say that. So you could baptize none of them. And he commanded the child to stand still. It went down both to the water, both Philip and the eunuch, and he baptized them. 1 Corinthians chapter 12 explains who is the actual baptizer. For by one spirit are we all baptized into one body. That's the church, Colossians 1.18. Will we bond or free and have all been made to drink into one spirit? Now look at that. This is the power. Made to drink into one spirit. That type of terminology, when the saints look at it, oh man, we know exactly what that's talking about. Because we're saints. When we tell you, you go by faith. But we have drank him in, and he is in us if we're still faithful. Oh yeah, inside. This isn't a way of thinking. They were already thinking righteously before they were baptized. They were already thinking righteousness. So was nothing else given? Just more righteous knowledge? See, the mind of the human must accept a spirit has no flesh. So therefore, it can go into a spirit. See, the problem with the human is he can only talk about what he sees. John was clear. He says, because I'm out of the earth. I speak of earthly things. He said, but now when he come, he going to tell you everything because he came from heaven. John drew the line. See, that's the difference in us. I only can tell you about this place. As holy as I am, I can't tell you about nothing else as a man. But he is different than me. That's the difference. You have to accept. Brethren, the Bible tells us all the components and how they work. You're just supposed to repeat them. Don't explain them. Just repeat them. So we understand that. Is it, is it a, ha, doesn't have the ability to say 1 Peter 3.21 the like figure where to even baptism does also now save us so that would eliminate the thief on the cross no fear of him has no power to dispute the gospel how not the putting away of the flesh he's not saying the water is holy but the answer of a good conscience toward God who's answering you toward God by the resurrection of Jesus Christ. What does that mean? His resurrection is what makes this action have meaning. So it has to be done right. The teacher must be of the Lord. Acts 19, 1 through 5 shows the teacher was not of the Lord. No salvation. The method must be of the Lord. The dipping in water all the way under. Pulling out. 
And the information share must be of the Lord. Because those three, it's a number of completion you'll never get around. Any of the three left out, no salvation to the soul. It doesn't matter how, it doesn't matter if you stop using drugs. You know, you know that there are some people who are pure idolaters. They worship concrete items, clay. They will never get high. You'd have to kill him to make him high. Is he saved? He's worshiping Molech, Vishnu or something, a rock. He'll tell you, I've never gotten out. I've never experienced anything other than nature. You going to save him? So just because you got all drugs don't mean you saved. You just got all something that was doing nothing but killing your body, opening your mind up to salvation, uh, a rejection of salvation. I thought that drug was done blocking your ability to be saved. You can't comprehend spiritually because it altered you. That's what it is. That's what it is. Time to turn for this backwards because you stop being an alcoholic. A murderer or a rapist. Let's see you remove the murder that you did. Amen. That's what I want to see. You can remove that murder, then you hit. Mm. You can stop killing, but you can't erase what you've killed. Mm. Without the Holy Ghost, remission of sin, you're in trouble. Who has gone to heaven, verse 22, on the right hand of God, angels of God and powers be made subject unto him. Look at Revelation 2 and 10. What is the hope? Here is the hope. Be another little thing without yourself. Behold, the devil shall cast some of you into prison. That you may be tried. Look who put you in jail, the devil. Oh, yeah. He got chains. He was for I'm telling you something. Don't, don't get confused on the word chains that your mind thinks he chained in a room. Mm -mm. Limitations. That's the limitation. But he can definitely throw you in jail. Oh, yeah. And tempt you. And the Lord said, here's your remedy. You shall have tribulation. Ten days. You can't get out of jail. You can't say, stop tempting me. No, he, he, he's going to bring it. Be faithful and dead. I'll give you a crown of life. You can't give up on God. Because you lack money, don't start robbing. You can't give up on God. Because you don't have all the things that you seek in your life, don't give up on God. The law said you're not judged by the things you possess. That's not, you're not judged by that. Not physical thing. You have to understand is we will lack certain things in life. Based on things just held back, we will lack certain things because we made error. The key is to ask God to help you. And he will. But you can't take it in your control. It's your fault. Whatever you need. Now if you need to be baptized. Stay standing when you sit down. They listen to the message. Touch so a little V-shaped object. Brother Free it sets up. But you can call several phone numbers. Many in there. Seek counseling. Don't kill your baby. Seek counseling from the saints of God. Don't tell your girlfriend kill her baby. You shouldn't have fooled with her. Yeah, you married. But let the baby live. You're not going to stop nothing by killing. Don't kill a baby if you're a doctor. Say, I'm out of that business. I clocked out. I don't do that no more. Stop. And there may be hope for you. Whatever you're dealing with in your life, don't leave your family. Seek counsel. We can show you how it can come together. But you got to seek counsel from those that know how. A single person can tell you how to stay married. If they use the word of God, you don't have to have no wife to talk about how to know her. A single person tell you how to stay married. If you let them tell you about the word of God. If you're here, you need prayer. Whatever you need, come now together. We stand and sing heaven's invitation. And early Jesus is calling. God bless you and for me. See on the portals is waiting. Let me see it, saints. Watching for you and for me.